Today I'm going to be giving you guys a tour through one of my favorite neighborhoods in Miami. It's called Bay Harbor Islands and it's basically a chain of two islands that are separated from each other by a small bridge and I'm on the southern end of the eastern island at the moment which is the bigger island and first of all this is one thing I love about it it's surrounded by water so everywhere you look around here it's gorgeous that's the first thing the other thing is that this area is actually not very known and is a very quiet area to live in basically the hustle and bustle of Miami without actually being in the middle of the mix and what I mean is if you want to live in a quiet neighborhood that's still close to everything that Miami has to offer and is actually quite affordable Bay Harbor Islands could be a place to consider so I'm gonna do this tour a little bit differently than I've done some of my past tours in the past I would just keep walking and you know continually showing every single thing in the area but in order to shorten it up a little bit I'm gonna film what I think are some of the most interesting things in the area and then I'll basically just cut to a different area once I find something else more interesting to show you guys and by the way I'm shooting this outside as you can tell and it's a kind of windy day so I can't really control the wind so if you hear gusts of wind it's not much I can do about it I have my windscreen on my microphone and all that stuff but there's only so much I can do to uh, mitigate that so this is nice right here I have a very quiet little park normally it's quiet here there's this huge semi parked here just because I'm giving the tour today <laughs> but normally that's not there so that's nice so this building to the left and all these buildings you see in front of me are all waterfront buildings and they're actually pretty affordable for being on the water you know you can rent units in these buildings between fifteen hundred and two thousand dollars a month starting at that price for like a one bedroom and obviously more for a two bedroom and to buy you're looking in the mid two hundreds but for an area like this I would say it's totally worth it if you really want that peace and quiet but still the convenience of having a central location in Miami because as you can see on the map which I'll put up on the screen you're close to Miami Beach you're close to Sunny Isles you're not that far from the airport you're close to downtown you can get pretty much anywhere in Miami from here within about 20 to 30 minutes or even less and that's that's huge as far as convenience goes so one of the main reasons people move to this area in my experience after doing some rentals and sales in this area is the school district the school here is one of the best schools in all of Miami and it's a very good area for families because it's, a, it's very safe and there's virtually no crime here and if you want your kids to go to a good school and get a good education and then Bay Harbor Islands is probably a good spot for you now that I'm away from that semi you can see what it kind of normally sounds like over here and hopefully we don't get too much wind in this area because the winds blowing in from the east so I'm on like the western end of the island now so it should be a little bit quieter over here but you know what I can't really wait for the perfect days to do these walking tours because otherwise they would never happen and I'm sure you guys want to see more of them so sometimes we have to deal with what the weather gives us but honestly guys today is such a beautiful day it's in the mid 70s today it's just a few days before Christmas and it's gorgeous I mean you can see look at the blue skies 
you know, we got a, a pretty strong breeze coming in off the ocean, but in this area where I'm at, you can't feel it as much, which I actually prefer because, you know, I live right on the beach, and sometimes when you're being bombarded with that constant wind, it gets pretty annoying. And shooting videos outside over there is pretty difficult, if not impossible, a lot of days because of that. So I'm sure a lot of you maybe wonder sometimes like why I don't do more outdoor videos and that's the main reason actually is because I know one thing after making a lot of videos and also watching videos how important audio is and I definitely don't want to turn people off from having a bad audio experience. I want to just bring you through here real quick. Look at this little condo. It's so beautiful, these little bungalow-style buildings. They're just so quiet and so lush with vegetation. And it's one thing I just love about this area. In fact, a while ago, I wanted to move to this area, but it wouldn't be good for my wife, Lizzie, because she has a dog walking business and all of her clients are pretty pretty close by to where we live now like walking distance within a few blocks and so if we were to move here it would be a lot more difficult for her to you know deal with her clients from a distance like that she probably would lose some business and that wouldn't be good for her but I personally do really love this area it's basically its own little city because Bay Harbor Islands is a town. It's not just a neighborhood. It is its own little city, just like Miami Beach is a city, Surfside is a city, Bell Harbor is a city, and the city of Miami is a city. They don't have any sidewalks here, so I am walking on the street, but there's not really much traffic over here, as you can tell, so it's not that big of a deal. It's not too dangerous. In fact, if you come out here on a school day, you'll see kids walk into school out here, and um, you know, obviously it's safe for them to do that. So I'll show you guys a little bit of the south end of this island and then I'll take a drive up to the north end of the island and shoot a little bit of that and then I'll move over to the residential area where they just have houses because basically how it works is on this island where I'm at now it's all condos and where all the businesses are located and then if you go to the western island they're all single-family homes, but they're both part of Bay Harbor Islands. So they're basically separated by housing type. And all of the businesses are over here on this island, which I'll show you guys a little bit later in the video. So I'm coming down this way because this is the famous Bay Harbor School that all the parents move here for. It's called Ruth K. Broad Bay Harbor K-8 through Center. So it's kindergarten through eighth grade, and after that the kids here would go to Miami Beach High School. So they pretty much do most of their years here in this school and their last four years at Miami Beach High. One thing I'm still surprised about here in Bay Harbor is how many empty lots there are still. I started off in an empty lot over there on the eastern end and there's a big empty lot here and actually right on the other side of this empty lot is another one and for how popular this area is i'm surprised that those empty lots even exist anymore it's shocking that the developers haven't swallowed them all up by now but i guarantee whoever is holding out and hasn't sold that land is going to get a pretty penny for it one day. In fact, there's another empty lot coming right up here on my left, 
all the way over by the water and I'll bring you guys over there. It's probably going to get windy, but it's going to be worth it for the view. Yeah, I saw this lot earlier when I was passing by and it's actually for sale by owner. So somebody's going to make a fortune off this lot because coming here and building something in this lot is going to generate a multi-million dollar property, probably some sort of condo, I'm sure. That's probably what it's zoned for. So let me take you guys out here and show you. And what you're seeing in the distance is Indian Creek Island, which is an ultra private, super exclusive island. And that's basically where the richest of the richest in Miami live. You have a lot of people, a lot of celebrities buy houses there. And we're talking houses that are 20, 30, 40 million dollars each. They have their own private golf course out there. You'll be able to see this huge yacht just parked out there having some fun. Look how beautiful this view is. And this is one of the reasons why people decide to live here. If you live in one of these waterfront buildings, you get this level of peace and quiet all the time. It wouldn't be a complete tour without showing you guys some of the pretty vegetation that grows around here. Look at this plant and some of these flowers. In fact, this is one of my favorite parts of doing these walking tours, is being surprised by the natural beauty that you just happen to run into along the way. So I'm not really showing you guys things in any particular order. I'm probably going to wrap up this end of the southern island here. I'll show you guys the main drag where all the businesses are. And then I'll show you the northern end of the island. And then I'll finish off the tour on the western island showing you some of the houses. And I'm not going to walk every single street and every single area because then this video would literally be three hours long and the last time I did one of these walking tours it seemed like people kind of wanted me to sum it up and show a bunch of different things without making the video extremely long and that's what I'm gonna try to do here in this video look at this plant so pretty look at those flowers absolutely gorgeous guys this never gets old for me. And here's this other empty lot I was telling you about. So it's kind of surprising to see all these empty lots here like this. But I'm sure the people who are selling them are asking quite a bit of money. And if sometimes I just stop talking like that, it's because sometimes I think it's nice to just take in the walk and enjoy the area. And I don't have to say something every second of the video. It's good to just enjoy the sights and listen to the sounds.
Now, one thing you guys might have noticed from the buildings you've seen so far in this video is a lot of them are pretty old. And Bay Harbor Islands doesn't have too many new developments. They have a few, but it's mostly these older buildings. But that's also part of what gives it its charm. A lot of people don't like the older buildings, but in fact, a lot of them are built much better than the new stuff. And even square footage wise, they're usually a lot bigger. So you see there's one newer building right there up ahead. Actually, there's two right by where I parked. But all along here, it's mostly all old stuff. I actually love the style and the design of some of these old buildings, like this one right here. It just looks so classic Miami. I don't know how else to even explain it. I'm not an architecture expert or interior design expert, but when I see something pretty like that, I know it. And I like pointing it out. Not a fan of those old jealousy style windows. They're not energy efficient at all, but that was the style back then. So I kind of just did a little circle here and then I'll resume in the business district in just a minute. So before I get out to the main drag, I want to show you guys right here real quick is a little restaurant, cafe, and mini mart that really only the locals know about here because it's kind of tucked away behind the main drag and most people never venture out beyond the main drag. So the only way you would ever see this is if you're walking through all of these back streets like that. So I'm getting pretty close to the main drag here. This is where they have all of the commercial stuff. They got the cleaners, got the hair salon here. All of the restaurants and stuff like that are on the main street. You got some office buildings, all the main stuff you'd normally see in a city. And the main drag here is 96th Street. And by the way, obviously it's going to get a little noisier because we're going to have more traffic, maybe some more wind. Just be ready for that. So basically this way is east and you walk about five, ten minutes in this direction. You're at the ocean and if you go directly the opposite direction, which I'll take you in just a minute, that will be the way to the mainland of Miami. So they got a bunch of restaurants here, some little shops, little facial place, Pilates. It's a very laid back little town. It's unfortunate that the main drag is on this busy street, especially for eating out at these restaurants, but it is what it is. Dentist. Up on the corner here, they used to have this huge Cadillac dealership and they tore it down. I'm not sure what's going to be there next. So funny sometimes when I pass by 
restaurants and stuff like that, people look at me like I'm from outer space because I'm walking with an iPhone and a gimbal. <laughs> you would think that would be normal by now, almost 2021, especially people watching all these type of videos on YouTube, right? Somehow, everybody's still amazed by it. It's okay. It doesn't bother me. It's just kind of funny. So you guys can see by all of the shops and stuff that we're passing by here, it's kind of just a little bit of everything, just like you'd expect in any normal town. But this is pretty much the gist of it. You have this block here, and then past this stoplight up here is the next block. So it's pretty much just these two main blocks with the majority of the restaurants and businesses in town, and that's it. It's a very small town, guys. Which is kind of interesting because you wouldn't expect to find a small town like this tucked away in a huge city like Miami, really, like that. I know when I first started coming here to show real estate properties, you know, rentals and sales, I was actually really surprised that this even existed. You know, because where I live in North Beach, it's quite a bit busier than it is here. It's not as touristy as South Beach, but, you know, we get a lot more traffic. I live on the main drag, you know, Collins Avenue. There's stuff going on 24-7. And I'm pretty sure most people that come to visit Miami have no idea that this even exists. So I'm sure that plays a big part in keeping it quiet like that. Look at these trees. Gorgeous. Man, I wish I could just stay this nice forever here in Miami. I wish it was like this every day. That's what these guys in uh, California get to take advantage of. I know it's not every day this nice in the mid 70s, but if you live in San Diego, probably most days it is. Although I know winter there is more like the rainy season. And there's another one of these huge empty lots. And this is where I'm gonna take you guys next. All those buildings and stuff up there, I'm gonna walk through the neighborhoods up that way. And we're pretty much at the end of the road here. You can just kind of see the other shops and things that are around here. That's pretty much it for the main drag in Bay Harbor. So now I'll take you through the north end of the Eastern Island. So now we're on the north end of the Eastern Island in Bay Harbor Islands. And this part of the island actually has a lot more development going on. There's a lot more new buildings going up. You can see this one's in progress. Literally right next to me here is an empty lot they're working on now. I saw another empty lot that's been empty since I moved here that it looks like they're finally starting to develop. So this end of the island is getting a lot of attention and a lot more new buildings than the southern end. Probably because there was more vacant land here to begin with. Even here you can see there's another empty lot. So I'm sure that trend is just going to continue. But the interesting thing about this part of the island is that there are more variety, there's more variety of housing options up here. So on the other end, you guys saw that a lot of those old buildings that you know have been there forever and they do have those type of buildings on the northern end too but one thing that they have in this part of the island that the other one doesn't is they have a lot of townhouse style buildings so these all here are townhouses so that's what's cool about this part of bay harbor islands is you can choose to live in a small apartment a small condo or even get a large three or four bedroom townhouse like something like this and some of them even have their own two-car garage like a house and I'll show you guys that as soon as I run into it 
So that's one thing that's pretty neat about Bay Harbor Islands for such a small town. You can pretty much choose to live in any type of property that you want. You can live in a house, you can live in a nice townhouse like this. You see this one's got a one car garage, but I saw some other ones with two car garages too. I think townhouses are a good mix of privacy, but yet lowering your, your maintenance. You know, the HOA fees are usually quite a bit lower than a regular condo and you don't have to worry about maintaining the outside or the garden, things like that. They still do that for you. But you get a lot of the privacy that you would normally get living in a house besides obviously sharing a wall with a neighbor. So like this place right across the street is the perfect example. They have their own little garage spaces here. The gates open so I'll just walk in and show you guys. Each unit here has its own two-car garage which is pretty nice and these townhouses are two stories if I remember right because I've been inside a lot of these places so you have like the one floor there with the kitchen and then the uh, bedrooms on the top floor and then a lot of them even have rooftop terraces and stuff like that so if you guys are interested in seeing something like that in a video put a comment below and maybe I'll tour one of those type of properties for you. See this area? A lot of mix with the old and the new. You got old right here, new right next door. And even some more new right across the street here. And this is one of the new developments I was talking about where they have two car garages as well. And I guess this would be interesting for a lot of people like me, you know, I have two cars and a lot of people that move here from northern states have two cars. It's kind of normal, but when you live in Miami, it's not that easy to get two parking spaces in a regular condo. Most of the time it's impossible. It'll come with one assigned space. And then the second one, you'll either have to pay for a valet spot, or if that's not available, you might have to just take your chances and hope you can rent one from one of your neighbors. So that's not really ideal because then your last option is basically just parking your second car on the street somewhere. And obviously that's less safe. It can get broken into, it can get you know a hit and run situation happening. So obviously that would be the last resort. So if you have two cars and you can afford it, I would suggest taking a look at Bay Harbor Islands. <clears throat> and I'm not really trying to sell you guys the area. I more or less just want to show you what exists here. Because I know before I moved to Miami, the only picture I had in mind about it was that old TV show, Miami Vice. That's pretty much all I'd ever seen about Miami. It seemed like a kind of seedy and scary and dangerous place and um, I really didn't know what to expect when I moved here but Miami really does have a little bit of everything as far as neighborhoods and lifestyle so we still get people here from all over the world and in all different age groups that move here some people want to retire here and in, actually in an area like this in Bay Harbor Islands there's a lot of retirees because it is quieter and more laid back but obviously we have all of the hot spots too for all the younger kids that want to live in South Beach and be next to the party scene all the time that's available too and everything in between like where I live for example in North Beach that would say that's a perfect example of in between it has a lot of the features that South Beach has, you know, walking distance to a lot of things and lots of bars and restaurants and things nearby. You don't have to hop in the car. All the stores are nearby, but it's not nearly as crazy as South Beach. We don't get a lot of riffraff in that area with South Beach, you know, with the holiday weekends. It's always crazy, always something going on. And some people love that. I don't. 
which is one of the reasons why I love Bay Harbor Islands. And I haven't been here in a while, actually, because I haven't done any deals here in a long time. And just coming here again and showing you guys the neighborhood is a pleasure for me. It's pretty cool because it forces me to get out here and literally walk the streets like this, which is something, honestly, I've never really done before because every time I came here before, it's just to meet a client, you know, they're already here or I'm waiting for them and then we look at a couple places and you move on to the next place and you don't really take the time to soak in the beauty of the area and that's one of the things I really love about making these YouTube videos is they, they, it really allows me to be who I really am you know because this what I'm doing right now is what I really enjoy Sure, selling houses and condos and rentals and all of that is nice. You get to make money and, you know, it is nice to have your own business and all of that. But making these YouTube videos, to me, is very special. I get to help you guys and help so many more people in a way that I could never do with real estate. In real estate, it's a one-on-one -on -one thing. You're helping one client at a time through one deal at a time. And through the power of YouTube and the internet, I get to leverage that platform to share the entire world and experience and knowledge that I have with you guys. And obviously it's all for free. You don't have to pay to watch YouTube. So that's even better. But just in case any of you are wondering, I have mentioned this in a few of my videos in the past. I do offer one-on-one -on -one consulting calls and I have a link for that down in the description of every single one of my videos. If anybody out there is interested in doing a one-on-one -on -one call with me, you can go ahead and click one in the description below. Obviously the area is pet friendly. Lots of people with dogs in the area. In fact, I've seen dozens of people out walking their dogs already. Let me get on the other side of these cars. It's kind of crowded here. There's some more of those beautiful flowers. I'm getting really close to the north end of the island and that's where the water is. So we're gonna get quite a bit more wind in this area. That's where all the wind's coming from at the moment, the north, northeast wind today. That lot up there with the green fence is the lot I was saying earlier, last time I was here, actually it was totally empty. They weren't doing any developments on, and it, it's been like that for the entire 13 years I've lived here in Miami, and now finally they're doing something here. I'm sure you guys can tell just by this tour how laid back this area is. It's just one of my favorite things about it. Yep, they're getting ready to build something. I don't know what. That building right up there, I've actually done a lot of deals in. One of my clients still owns a unit there. Probably actually gonna have it for rent or for sale soon. You know, the lease is coming up. So one thing I was thinking about while I'm wrapping around this street that I wanna ask you guys is I was thinking about getting 
one of those dash cams. I've seen some YouTube channels that literally just drive around and that's all they do. I think that's kind of boring, but a lot of people seem to like that. And I'm not saying I want to copy that or anything, but I think it might be kind of cool to get one of those dash cams and give you guys like a driving tour of some of these areas like this. That way we can kind of cover more ground than I could ever cover on foot, obviously. And I can still do a commentary like I'm doing now and give you guys my opinion on the area and all that. So if you guys think it would be cool for me to get one of those dash cams and do some driving tours as well, let me know. Because really at the end of the day, my goal is to make the videos that you guys are going to enjoy the most. That's the recipe for a successful YouTube channel, making videos that you enjoy making as the creator and your viewers enjoy watching just as much as you enjoy creating them. So that's the balance I'm trying to find with all these videos. So I hope you guys are enjoying them. I know these walking videos have been highly requested for me to do more and I'm proud to be doing this one today. Hey, check this out. Here's another townhouse with two car garages. For such a small island, they actually have a lot of these buildings available here. Maybe even more than Miami Beach. We don't have too many townhouse style units in Miami Beach actually. I would totally enjoy living in a place like this. Probably more than the beachfront condo that I'm in. Because I would really love having that garage. And this is still walking di this is still walking distance to the beach, guys. You can walk to the beach from here. The beach is only about three or four blocks that way. So it's about a 10 minute walk from where I'm at. So you can see I kind of just did a circle around the neighborhood here. And all the way down at the end of the street is pretty much where we started this tour. That's all the way to the southern end of the island. It's a very small area. You could easily walk a huge loop around it. In fact, if I lived over here, instead of doing my night walks on the boardwalk, I would just do one huge lap around this island and it would probably be pretty equivalent to that walk. Man, I'm really enjoying this day today. It's so beautiful. And I would actually rather be out doing this right now than being at the beach because since it's only like 75 and it's pretty windy, that might sound warm to you guys up north. And trust me, it is warm when you're out walking on the street like this, but it's not so warm when you're standing almost naked on the beach with a 15 mile an hour wind hitting you. So it does feel quite a bit cooler when you're in that situation, I must say. So these are actually the perfect days for me to get out here and do these walking tours. I know the last time I did one of these, it was still basically summer, at least summer in Miami, and man, was it hot. So today, it's nice and pleasant to be out here doing this. So I'm almost back to my Jeep. So I'll stop it right about here, and I'll pick up in the neighborhood that has all of the houses and that will conclude the tour of Bay Harbor Islands. So now I'm on the northernmost tip of the western island of Bay Harbor Islands with all the houses and look what we have, another empty lot with that beautiful water. So all these houses here, guys, are 
well above a million dollars so you got to have some coin to live in this neighborhood but man is it gorgeous and the houses are all pretty decent size so it's not like you don't get what you pay for and obviously it's pretty private and relatively unknown and this is something I actually didn't even know about here this is the first thing that caught my eye look at this nice little park this big old banyan tree probably at least a hundred years old I have a nice bench to just sit here and enjoy How pretty. Now, and actually the 12 years or so I've been doing real estate, I've never actually been inside any of the houses in this neighborhood. It's not like I'm getting calls every day for people that want to spend two, three, four million dollars on a house. So that's pretty much the reason. So it'll be nice to give a little tour through this area. And those buildings over there, that's where we were just at. So there's like a little canal behind these houses that separates it because they are two separate islands, but they are part of the same town. And it's actually so neat to be on this side over here because I feel like the layout of the islands are pretty much identical, but they're just full of single family homes, which is pretty neat. This is a very family oriented area as well. I saw a lot of kids playing on the street and people taking bicycle rides around the neighborhood. And this is definitely one of those areas in Miami where, you know, if you bought a house here, 20 or 30 years ago, man, you're sitting pretty right now because you probably only paid a couple hundred thousand for the house and now it's worth, you know, 10, 15, 20 times more than what you paid for it. Now, I don't know, you guys can let me know what you think in the comments, but personally, I'm not really sure if it's worth it to pay that much for a house even if it is in a really nice neighborhood like that because you know you pay so much monthly and even if you do make a lot of money you know you're still paying 10 13 15 thousand dollars a month in your monthly house payment between the mortgage the taxes and insurance and all of that and i just feel like that's largely unnecessary i mean do you really need to pay that much to live a nice life? I don't think you do. Personally, if I made that kind of cash, I would rather have a four or five thousand dollar a month payment for a really nice house that's a fraction of the cost of one of these and pocket the rest for investing or even just living life, man, you know, going on beautiful trips and seeing different things and getting to enjoy the little bit of time we have on this planet versus just spending all your money to pay for one of these beautiful houses. Unless they're actually that wealthy where, you know, you're spending 15,000 a month on a house payment, but you make 50, so, it's not so much. That could be the case. Got a brand new house being built right there. A 
one thing I've been seeing here is a lot of these houses have these basketball hoops just right out to the street. That reminds me of growing up in Illinois, man. We used to have a basketball hoop in our front yard. It wasn't a portable one like that. It was one that was actually dug into the ground. But I used to love going out and just shooting hoops with my brother or some of the neighborhood kids. Seems like that's a popular thing over here. There's another one straight ahead. Wow, look at this house. It's beautiful. I love this entryway like that. Very nice. This one looks like it could possibly be abandoned. Yeah, it's got a bunch of stickers on the front door. Might be some sort of foreclosure. See a sticker in the window? Most likely it is. But even a place like that is still going to be well over a million. I would be surprised if it was less, to be honest. Look at this old style Miami house. That's totally 1940s, 1950s Miami right there. And these houses have some really nice layouts. Good sized bedrooms, terrazzo floors. That's something you just don't see anymore. Another basketball hoop. <laughs> Got this beamer on rollers. Not sure what that's for. Maybe it's not running. I really like the yard of this house. It's another classic looking house. And yet another empty lot. There's still opportunity to buy some land here. Hey, look. Kitty came over to say hi. Hey, bud. Hi. No, maybe not. Okay. There's another one right there. A couple of them, actually hanging out in the shade I think I mentioned this on one of my last walking tours but Miami has big stray cat population and that was introduced in, on purpose a long time ago to get rid of all the rats and it definitely worked because the whole time I've lived here I might have seen a handful of rats and never inside anywhere always just outside by the boardwalk so that's nice. Even wherever I grew up in Illinois, we used to get mice in the house almost every winter, and that was just disgusting. I always hated that. Sometimes they would even end up in like the cereal box or the bread, something like that. Ugh. No good. Nice mansion on the water here. Very, very nice. So I'm not going to walk around the entire island because that would take forever. And like I said, I wanted to give you guys a tour like this, but kind of sum it up and show you all the different parts of the area that it has to offer without literally walking through every street and every block because that would take forever. But that's where I think that the, the driving tours could come in handy because for example I could make a driving tour video of this whole neighborhood in about the same amount of time that it would take me to just do a small chunk of this walking tour and you only get to see a fraction of it.
but there is something nice about being able to just see the area on foot because it's a very slow way to really take in what's around and obviously if I did the driving tour I would try to go slow but in some areas you just can't go too slow otherwise I'll have a million people behind me honking and that won't be too nice that one's different looks like whoever bought this house is probably going to be tearing it down or doing some full-scale renovation but that's totally a different style of house you don't see too much around here in Miami Here's another classic Miami home. I do see a few of them are for sale. Getting out here walking in this area is a nice way to feel like I'm enjoying some nature but still being in the city because as you guys saw on the map this is still smack dab in the middle of Miami this plant how beautiful although I gotta say the gate on this house is kind of ugly but their plant is beautiful <laughs> very nice Well, I figured it would be fitting that since I started this tour by the water on the other island on the other side, it would only be a nice way to end the tour by the water on the other side of the island here. Next thing you got to do is check out one of my other videos right over here and I'll see you guys in the next one.